Okay, so tell me, what's better than having an extremely detailed galactic and interstellar map that shows us a discovery of thousands and even millions of different objects? That's right, having two such maps from two completely different sources essentially extending our knowledge of the universe by a huge amount, which is basically exactly what just happened days apart. We had two major releases from two separate organizations, both discovering an enormous amount of new objects out there, and more importantly, allowing us, allowing the public, to physically explore them just by using our browsers. So yeah, hello wonderful person, this is Anton. Today we're going to be discussing these two massive releases from ESA and from Noir Lab that just so happened to be only days apart, and so I decided to combine them into one single video. And both essentially focusing on discovering a tremendous amount of new objects potentially discovering new things we never knew existed, and then kind of sort of integrating all of this into one of the tools you can use with the link in the description, which allows you to basically look at everything by yourself. So I guess let's start with ESA, or basically with the Gaia Space Telescope, the iconic telescope that's already done at least three separate data releases, which served as basically the main source for most major discoveries in the last few years. And as you might be aware already, Gaia Telescope is basically one of the biggest, if not the biggest, astronomical surveys ever conducted, and it's essentially looking at the entire skies at the same time. It essentially uses the concept known as astrometry by detecting minute motions of stars across the night skies, thus allowing it to determine both the distance to the stars, determine the motion across the galaxy, and then allow us to create various three-dimensional maps. And recently Gaia released a new set of data a somewhat more unofficial data, referred to as FPR or Focused Product Release, data containing motions of approximately 1.8 billion stars, and also other objects, including objects right here in the solar system. And more importantly this time, scientists actually wanted to cover some of the gaps we had with previous observations, mostly focusing on areas of the galaxy and even the areas right here in the solar system, in order to clarify certain things. And while well, one of these investigations was actually from an iconic region located in a galaxy. It's a very well-known globular cluster known as Omega Centauri, the largest, the brightest, and potentially one of the oldest clusters in the entire galaxy. Something that for many decades we believed to be just a single star, until powerful enough telescopes uncovered that this is actually something like 10 million stars, all in the same location. But because the center of this cluster is packed with stars extremely close to one another, it's always been particularly difficult to study it, mostly because it just looks like one big star. I mean, this is basically kind of what they all look like, and so naturally the center here is a little bit difficult to study. But even though this cluster is 17,000 light years away from us, Gaia was able to uncover half a million new stars, 500,000 completely new stars discovered inside the cluster, which is precisely what you see right here. This is the image of before and after, allowing scientists to distinguish stars we've never seen before. For this they actually had to use what's known as the engineering mode, where the telescope gets additional light it could not process before. And because of this new data, it's now possible to actually directly study this cluster and everything in it, finally discovering how exactly the stars are moving here, how they interact with one another, what's in the center of the cluster, and most importantly, potentially answering the origins of these unusual objects. We still have no idea where they came from, how they were formed, or why some of them were only created in the first few millions of years of the universe, other ones were created much later. And so no actual answers just yet, but definitely a lot of data that will most likely provide these answers in the next few months. But this was just the first discovery from Gaia, it also completely by accident discovered a bunch of gravitational lenses. And what's really strange is that nobody actually knew it was even able to do so, it was completely by accident and it was completely unexpected, but turns out that through collection of so much data over the years, basically 10 years now, it accidentally discovered certain stars that seemed to act a little bit strange, because they were gravitationally lensed, and those stars were not stars at all, they were distant quasars, super powerful, super massive, distant black holes emitting a tremendous amount of light. And in this case, 381 candidates have been discovered, with 50 so far almost certainly being new quasars we didn't know existed, with at least 5 of these quasars also being very rare, something that's known as quadruply lensed quasar, 
where we essentially get four separate images and which also represent very important discoveries if we want to learn more about things like, for example, dark matter, dark energy, or really anything to do with the universe expanding, shrinking, and so on. And so by discovering five more such objects, this just gave cosmologists a lot of new data to work with. These objects are extremely rare. It also, strangely enough, was able to additionally discover approximately 10,000 variable stars, essentially stars that usually change their brightness for some unusual reasons. Sometimes because something passes in front of them, sometimes though, maybe they just do this. They shrink and they become bigger very periodically. And generally these stars are extremely important for quite a lot of different reasons in cosmology, with the main one being these are actually cosmic ladders. They allow scientists to measure distances to various objects where these stars are located. And so by finding a bunch of these stars across the galaxy somewhere, or for example in a certain globular cluster, it then becomes possible to determine exact distances. But obviously in some of those cases, some of those variable stars also present mysteries because they don't really change brightness as expected. And although the current papers released from all of this data have not discovered anything unusual yet, it is quite possible that at least one of these stars is going to be maybe not exactly what we expected. And then one of the most important parts of the release was actually in regards to the solar system. Here it contained the data about 150,000 asteroids, specifically focusing on recalculating how they move across the solar system by watching them for a much longer period of time. And here the scientists were able to recalculate their orbits, making these calculations at least 20 times more precise. And this is really important because many of these asteroids do have a potential to maybe hit planet Earth. So far though, nothing dangerous here. None of the hundreds of thousands of asteroids discovered so far have even a remote chance of hitting Earth in the next hundred years. Nevertheless, the recalculation here was extremely important for basically the safety of planet Earth. And so all of these individual discoveries highlight how extremely important Gaia mission has become in the last few years and how it's able to actually precisely calculate everything around us, even helping us with things like asteroids relatively close to us, or even discovering quasars practically at the edge of the observable universe. So yeah, definitely some mind-blowing stuff. But that was just the first release. As in that was just the first survey that I wanted to mention. There was another one just the day after. It's known as the Siena Galaxy Atlas, and it was compiled by the scientists from National Science Foundation using Noir Lab telescopes. And in this case, this survey is absolutely insane as well. It contains 400,000 different galaxies in our cosmic neighborhood, compiled from all of the data collected between 2014 and 2017. In this case, capturing various images in both optical and the infrared light, representing approximately half of the entire night skies, but also representing the largest galactic survey ever. 400,000 galaxies with incredible new pictures and also recalculated data, specifically focusing on the accuracy, so things like redshift, distance and so on, essentially creating the most detailed map of the night skies that's definitely going to be used in the future to study the universe. This will obviously help us understand how various galaxies formed and evolved and potentially help us understand what's up with the Milky Way. Why exactly is our galaxy so much stranger than we thought? You can learn more about this in some of the videos in the description. But like I mentioned in the beginning, you can physically go through this entire survey or I guess this entire atlas by yourself. All of these galaxies are inside of this atlas and because there are 400,000 of them, it will be a very long night for you to go through all of them. The link is in the description. But the main point of all of this was to basically correct previous errors. For example, sometimes in some of these older surveys, some of the stars might actually have been counted as a galaxy or vice versa. Here some of the data was cleaned up and a lot of artifacts were removed as well. It also obviously recalculates the positions of these galaxies in the night skies and gives us a much better map for future studies of the entire universe. Oh, and did I mention that it's also basically free and you can totally use it? Yeah, that's probably the best part. Pretty much anyone, especially amateur astronomers or independent astronomers, can essentially use this website, collect all of the actual physical data and use it for any study they want. And that's the best part of all of this. The beauty of modern science, complete openness and the ability for anyone to just do it as long as they know what they're doing. This link in the description contains everything you need, including the raw data that should be somewhere right here and of course all of the explanations 
in case you've never done any astronomy or any of this analysis ever before. It's really amazing how far the astronomy has come in just the last few years. It was practically impossible to do any of this a couple of decades ago when I was in college, unless you took some advanced courses in astronomy and unless someone actually guided you through it. Now it's all basically just on this website and you just have to read and follow the instructions. Super cool stuff. Anyway, on that note, thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who has learned about space and sciences. We'll definitely come back and talk more about this once there are some additional discoveries and once actual studies start to come out, potentially finding some really cool stuff in all of this data. And on that note, and in the meanwhile, maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.